Next up, USC at Notre Dame. Now, Notre Dame's favored in this game, even coming off of a loss. And this is the Brady Quinn, Matt Leinert Bowl. We're going to send Big Noon kickoff to Notre Dame Stadium. So, if you're a Notre Dame student or fan, get out there and support my guys. They're not coming with us to Michigan, Indiana. They're going to be at this game, USC and Notre Dame. So, get out there. I'm sure we're going to hear a lot about the Bush push because – Obviously, Matt's there, Brady's there, and that game was a classic back in 05. Now, when you get to this game, though, this is concluding the, the brutal stretch for Notre Dame. Notre Dame just went Ohio State, Duke, Louisville, and now USC. Every one of those teams ranked. They lost the heartbreaker to Ohio State. Win the thriller against Duke, had nothing left against Louisville. They didn't play very well. Turned the ball over. They went in there. I don't think that they expected the environment that they got. That environment at Louisville was fantastic. And now they've got to come back and, and go back home, good for them, to play USC. And it's a departure from the rest of these teams. Like, these were knocked down, slug it out type of games, physical games. And now all of a sudden it's going to be USC comes in there with their high-flying offense and Caleb Williams. And so it's a departure of style and philosophy, but then they get to come home. I'm interested to see how much they have left. What do they have left at the end of this stretch? This is not like the NFL. In the NFL, teams play at or near their best every single week, generally speaking. In college, that doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. And for a lot of different reasons, but there are natural ebbs and flows in the season. And you're seeing that with Notre Dame as they're ebbing and flowing. Here's, here's the interesting part is that this is now going to be the start of the really difficult portion for USC. So how much energy do they have to exert to potentially win this game? That's something to watch for because as they go down the stretch, five of their next six opponents are in the top 20. We've talked about all year about how difficult this Pac-12 is, USC is starting on that trek. So what does this game look like? How much energy do they have to expend if they're going to get a win? Probably a lot. How long at this point in the season, and this is what's happened now over the last three weeks, how long can Caleb Williams drag the Trojans along for the season? Caleb Williams is playing unbelievable football. Now, to be fair, he, he wasn't great for the entirety of of the Arizona game, but he can elevate himself to a place where he takes that offense above the X's and O's. I was shocked Arizona kicked the extra point in the first overtime because you're just giving him more time. The more time that number 13 has, the more time that he's going to have to beat you because he's that good. He's got 28 total touchdowns so far this season. That's 11 more than he had at this point a year ago. The guy is playing sensational. Now, on the flip side, when Sam Hartman is on the field with Notre Dame and their offense is on the field with USC's defense, Notre Dame has to control the game on the ground, and they should be able to. USC's run defense has not been very good. They're allowing about five and a half yards per carry on non-sack plays. Their rushing defense numbers look better because they get to the quarterback. They've had, what is it, 22 sacks, which is third in the country. That comes off of the rushing yardage. So when you strip that away and you really look at what are they when the ball is handed off and they just have to defend the run, not very good. In fact, on non-sack plays, five and a half yards per carry, that's 106th in college football. If I'm Notre Dame, that's where I'm sitting. Estime is getting the ball. That run game, that offensive line is going to eat it up. They're going to eat up the clock. You got to keep Caleb Williams off of the field. You're not giving him an opportunity. You want Caleb Williams to touch the ball at maximum 60 to 65 times. That's the maximum plays that you want to see. They did that against Ohio State, came up one play short. Ohio State, I believe, had 65 plays in that game total. 15 of them were on the last drive. Ohio State had run 15 offensive plays up to that last drive before they went down the field and scored. So Notre Dame's got to put that same game plan into effect against USC. This is their best opportunity to keep Caleb Williams at bay. Williams might have his best attribute back on offense, his best threat, which is Zachariah Brantz. He was practicing this week. He missed the last two games with an undisclosed injury, but we don't know. We don't know what his status is going to be. 
This game is 100% about Notre Dame's run game. If they can control the game on the ground, then they'll win. If they can't and Hartman has to drop back and throw the ball, then the pass rush gets involved. It's one of the best pass rush rushes in the country, 22 sacks. That's third in the country. Then you are also giving your opposition more opportunities. So Caleb Williams is on the field. It's all about the Irish on the ground. If they can run the ball, then they're going to win. And by the way, they need this one. They need this one desperately because they've lost two of these three games, uh, their last three. The one that they won was almost miraculous. They got a fourth and 16. So if they were to lose at home to USC, in particular with the way that USC has looked over the last few weeks, people would not be happy with Marcus Freeman. And you know what? This is a game that they have to win. I think Notre Dame wins this game. There's rain and wind in the forecast that lends itself to Notre Dame, right? You want to slow things down, be methodical, run the ball. That's what they're going to have to do. Thank you for watching the Joel Class Show YouTube channel. And if you like this clip, make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel. And you can stay up to date on all of my college football coverage.